How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and in this video I'm going to be talking about this. No, this isn't some sort of giant CD. This is verbatim brand 3D printing filament. Let's see how it works. So many of you will be familiar with Verbatim as a company for producing data storage devices like SD cards, but 3D printing materials is kind of a new venture for them. So we sell the filament at 3D Printing Studios and I thought I'd borrow a roll to test it on my Art Mini and see how it performs. The roll I've got is ABS at 1.75mm diameter and it's black, so I wanted to compare it versus the up brand black and see how it compares with the stock up temperatures and then see how it works with the mod for the up. So for those who don't know, the up actually runs at a higher temperature than most other printers for ABS. It actually runs at more like 260, 270 degrees, which is usually too hot for ABS and there's been a very big sticking point for people with up printers. They can't easily run aftermarket filament. So I wanted to see if this quality filament, because it's actually Japanese made, so Verbatim have put a lot of effort in getting very high quality plastics and made in Japan uh, filament. I want to see if this actually works any better than the other stuff that's been coming out of, for example, China. Not having a crack at Chinese filament though, I've actually got a roll of eSun filament coming from Hobby King, which I'll be testing very soon. So yeah, a lot of stuff coming out of China, like the apps from China, for example. They make very high quality stuff, but this is the first time I've actually seen a very large manufacturer go into the 3D printing field. Usually it's an unknown company producing filament, but Verbatim is a huge company. And if they're getting into the game, it means something's up. It means things are going to change very quickly. All right, so for my tests, the first print was a control using the up brand black ABS. Then I did the same settings with the verbatim with the fan door closed. So that's how you normally print ABS on the ups. Then I did a print with a fan door open. And then I did a print using the up hack to re reduce the temperature down to 230 degrees. So these are the results. So the first print was with the up brand black ABS as a control and as you would expect the raft pulls away beautifully. You can always just use your fingers, it's so good. Uh, the print is not warped at all and the finish is, has, a, it has a really nice subtle sort of matte finish to it. It's not as glossy as other brands of ABS. So yeah, it works beautifully but as you'd expect because it's up brand plastic on a nut machine. Then we moved over to verbatim with the stock up settings, so fan door closed and stock temperatures which are about 260 degrees and the raft is completely welded to it. Um, yeah, no chance getting that off. The finish itself actually looks quite good on the part, but the raft is completely welded to it. You can get some pliers in and remove it, but it's, yeah, I would call that a fail to be honest. There's a little bit of um, dags on the edge of the part and when the final layer pulled away there's a wisp as well which indicates the plastic was way too hot. Then there's the print with the fan door open on stock settings and the raft in this circumstance does pull away. It is a lot harder than the up brand plastic but it will pull away with pliers and it's leaving a fairly decent finish. Uh, the actually the, the edge of this print actually looks really good. In a way it actually looks better than the up brand plastic in terms of the layer accuracy. I'm not sure why that is. Um, it might just be catching the light a little bit nicer, but it looks really slick and really smooth. So, quite impressed with this. If you're not comfortable with modifying your up with the up hack, you could probably run the verbatim filament with the fan door open quite comfortably, uh, but be aware the support will be a bit harder to pull away. And finally, this was really surprising. So this is with the up hack, dropping the temperature down to 230, 240 degrees, and this print worked beautifully, just as well as the up brand plastic does at the higher temperatures. So the raft pulls away easily with your hands and the sides of the parts look fantastic. Top surface is filled in well and even the little column actually looks quite good. There's not really any drooping in it. I think the print did warp ever so slightly compared to the up brand plastic print and the higher temperature print with the fan door open but that just comes down to modifying your settings slightly. So maybe 250 degrees is actually a good setting for verbatim versus the 260, 270. I don't know, you might need to play around with it a bit, but I'm really impressed with how well it printed. In terms of the visual look of the spool and the plastic itself, the spool's a really nice design, quite chunky, uh, standard dimensions for a one kilo spool. You won't have any issues putting this to a standard roll holder. Uh, the filament has a very glossy finish on it, which is sort of different to the up-branded sort of satin matte finish on the filament. That's just how they manufacture it, no issues. It's very dimensionally accurate. Um, I could not find really any deviation along its length. And in terms of odor, it's actually not too bad. Um, I have come across black ABS in the past that stinks out the room, but this is about the same as the up plastic. So it's not odorless. It is still ABS and it does still have a smell to it, 
but not nearly as bad as other ABSs I've come across. So don't worry about that too much. Um, just make sure you print with some sort of ventilation. My one pet hate at the moment is the verbatim box is this. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we have a retail environment down in Fremantle and this looks terrible on the shelf. You know, oh, I'll just, oh, okay, what color is that? But they are just getting into the 3D printing game, so apparently their boxes are changing to look nicer. What's really interesting is on the back, it's got a QR code, which then goes to their website, surprisingly enough. And down in the bottom here, it says 24 months warranty. I've never come across filament that has a warranty. Um, this might be transferring over from their company's other products like SD cards. SD cards, you obviously want a warranty. But for filament, I thought it was like you bought it, you, you keep it, like that's it. But I wonder how this works. Like what if you print something and the print breaks, is that against their warranty? Whereas, no, they're probably saying the filament is dimensionally stable, it's gonna last for at least 24 months. If it doesn't, then you get a, a replacement or refund. I think that's probably what they're going with. This stuff, at the moment, prices vary wildly. Uh, 66 bucks is the highest I've seen it, and it goes all the way down to 30 something dollars plus shipping if you look hard on the, on the internet. Um, but yeah, highly recommended. Uh, it prints really well on the ups, which is hard to find for aftermarket ABS. And yeah, so thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Look out for another video on 3D printing filament soon where I'm gonna be reviewing the eSun filament. So verbatim's Japanese, eSun is Chinese. So eSun is cheap filament. I'm talking $20 per kilo cheap. But it's also a very well-known brand and very well-respected and well-established in the 3D printing field. So I've got some of that coming from Hobby King. Um, I bought it on my own money, no association with Hobby King whatsoever, and I'm going to be doing a fair and unbiased review on that when it comes. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again soon on Maker's Muse. See you around guys, bye.